Folks, welcome back here to the Casting Couch. I'm joined tonight with a gentleman you might have seen on Channel 31's program, Catch and Cook. Ron, how are you, mate? Not bad, Paul, yourself? Good, much. Great to have you on the Casting Couch. Yeah, and, I like uh, it. Nice and white, mate. Those it is. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he young kid on climbing around on here the other day <laughs> with a hot jog in his hand. We've had to get the cloth out and give it a tidy up. Let me give you the tip. Yeah, but, uh, yeah what have you been up to, mate? Fishing oh, wise? Fishing wise, not, look, to be honest, not a hell of a lot. Yep. Uh, been doing a little bit of brim fishing lately. Um, I was over in South Australia uh, some months ago, back in February, yeah, yeah. and we're now in what, June 2015, uh, yeah, June, yep. so yeah, that was really the last decent fish I had, was over there in yeah, South, right. South Australia, Coffin Bay, uh, with Why Not Charters. Oh, they're good boys, are they over at Wyella? No, uh, no, not Coffin, Coffin, Coffin Bay. Coffin Bay. They, Sorry, they yeah. also operate out of Port Lincoln as Port well. Port Lincoln, that's where I was thinking. Certain yeah. times of year they take the boat around to Coffin Bay <laughs> and they run charters out of there. I think it's just because the fishing grounds are closer. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we were targeting fish like your Samson's, Kingfish, Nanny Guy, uh, those big blue groper. Yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah, it was just an awesome trip. Oh, Southern Bluefin Tuna as well. Yeah, you're right. Just All into one mix. Basically, yeah, bucket load. A lot of people underestimate that South Australian case. They seem to think it's more of a a forgotten part of Australia, but I'll tell you what, the fishing down there that I've done has been incredible, so. It is, and the quality of the fish is good too, like, you know, you can go out here in Victoria and you can catch your bluefin and your kingies and stuff like that, but, you know, you can't get your Samsons, of course you which can't. is great, which is South Australia is so well known for, mm -hmm. especially that Air Peninsula, um, and they, something about why not charters, they pride themselves in uh, looking after the, particularly those fish being the Samsons. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, like you're right, the quality of the fish over there is just so great. Flathead, yep. big blue spot flathead and big King George and I, think, I think one of the reasons it is like that is because so many people in Australia do underestimate it. Mm. But they don't spend the time to go and explore it and, and fish it. And it's only the locals that are exploiting it and taking advantage of it. We're all missing out, so we've got to exactly get over to right. South Australia a bit more often. Now, uh, with Catch and Cook, you, yep. uh, for those that haven't seen the show, these guys mm. get out there, they go fishing for a day, they catch a species. A handball it back to Gina. Basically. Gina cooks it up in the kitchen, shows us all how to prepare it and so it's half decent to eat. And then you go back and do a bit more fishing. Well, that's all we do, mate. That's exactly right. How good is that? So a year, for years and years and years, we've had TV programs. And I've got to admit, I used to crack it when Rex used to bring Huey on and do a cooking session. <laughs> but now that I'm a yeah. bit older and I've got a wife and a child, yeah. it's, uh, it's something a little bit different, you know? It's, a, it it's, it's bringing something back to the kitchen. And it's good to see, and I've got to say this, I saw for years a lot of fishing shows putting fish back, putting fish yeah. back, putting fish yeah. back, putting fish back. They forget we, ki we kill fish, you know? we're recreational fish. When we kill them, we take them home, we harvest them and we eat them. So it's good to see a bit of the balance from now too. That's exactly right. And yeah, like you said, you know, we all enjoy eating fish. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can be taught the right ways on how to prep them and look after them, to get them to the plate, to the kitchen, to cook them up, you know, that's, that's really, that's why we go fishing at the end yeah, of the day, awesome. is to enjoy that. Well, no, I do, because I love a feed yeah. of fresh fish, but. So you've done this for a few seasons now, Catch and Cook. How many's it been? We have, I think we're going into year seven. Wow, seven years. Seven years, yeah. It's a fair slog for any show, really. It is, mate. Look, we've had on Channel 31 yep. a new episode every week. Bar some weeks we may run a repeat, and that's only because we've had bad weather. <laughs> and I haven't that's been fishing, out. That's fishing, isn't it? That is, mate. And I haven't been out filming, so we have to go back through the archives and pull one forward and replay that. But, yeah, seven years going on, going strong. Very good. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a good road. What's coming up on Catch and Cook? Um, <clears throat> probably far. just more local fishing. Good. To be honest, like yep. I've got the the six metre Regal Marine Southern Southern over there. Yeah, yeah. The one fifty. The big blue one. Yeah, the blue one. That's yep. right. It's all sign wrapped. It's uh, got the the brand new one fifty four stroke uh, Merc on Merc on the back. They're and an awesome piece of equipment. Th they are, mate. They yeah. really are. For a four stroke, they are the bee's knees. Yep. Um, so yeah, I just need to get that out locally and just start doing a bit more local stuff, yeah, mate. Awesome, awesome. Flathead offshore, gummies offshore, squid in the port, whiting when they fire up come yep, summertime. Yep. So. So if you want to catch these guys on Channel 31, they're on which night are you on, Ron? Uh, we're on Tuesday nights at 9.30pm. Tuesday 9.30. And we repeat on the Friday morning, and we also repeat on the Saturday as well. Good stuff. Now, we've got that part out of the way. I want to ask yep. you a bit about your fishing. I like to try and find out a little bit about the fishing journey that people have made from the time yep. where they've started fishing and gone all the way through. Now, you didn't just walk out of your baby crib in your nappies and pick up a rod and start fishing. <laughs> no, so I did. I did. You did, yeah. did you? <laughs> so, well, for no. you, who was it that sort of influenced you and sort of got you into fishing? In uh, my mother and father. Mother and father. Yeah, definitely. We'll yeah. see, Dad, Mum and Dad, they brought a boat back in 1988. 
Yep, and we were the World Expo time '88. It was a centenary, wasn't it? It was. It was yeah, the bicentennial year. That's right. It yeah. was too. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, 1988, and that's where it all grew. Like um, the love of fishing started back in, back in those days um, in South Gippsland at a yep, place yep. called Port Albert. I know Port Albert well. I've yep. been down there, done some perch fishing in the river. Yeah. You're not supposed to say that. Oh, I'm not <laughs> worried about the perch, mar- perch mafia. Come and get but, me. Yeah, that's it. But look, <laughs> we spent so many times down there targeting King George Whiting, flathead. Um, occasionally would go offshore and target the snapper out in the reefs and stuff like that. So, and that's where it all, all began. As a, as a young whippersnapper at the age of, I think I was five years of age, going on six then, um, just cool. loved it, mate. And coming from a family of all boys, mm-hmm. so Dad loved it that all us boys would pile on the boat and go out there and have some quality time. And oh, very yeah, cool. It was just good, yeah. And I've just, now, when you were back at Port Albert, Mum and Dad were giving you a bit of pocket money. Can you remember going into your first tackle shop with your own money? Ooh. And what was the first thing you bought? The first thing I ever brought, I reckon it might Not have been... Not hooks a, and that sort of stuff, but the first thing that you sort of looked at in the shop and went, I'm going to go and buy one of those, what was it? I reckon it was a Tassie Devil. Tassie Devil? To be honest, yeah. Up here for, for, for throwing around up at Eildon? Or? Well, I think at that stage I was throwing around the back creeks of Narnagoon North. Oh, of course, yeah. On the edge of the Bunyip State Park, and I think I actually lost that lure. But I'm pretty <laughs> certain, yes, it was either a like a Salter Spinner, or, or it was Tassie. a Tassie Devil, it was along those lines, definitely. Yeah, right. Yeah. Now, when you'd, uh, you've, you've obviously grown a little bit from fishing with mum and dad and that sort yep. of stuff. You, you come to a level now where you've sort of done this as as, as, like a, as an occupation as such, mm-hmm. you're doing a show. Basically, yeah. Where, how did you come to that sort of progression? Was there something in the middle there that sort of smacked you around and said, Ron, you're going to do this for a while? Or... Um, look, my, growing up with the fishing, I sort of steered away from it mm-hmm. as a teenager, as we all do. We go off and do things that we probably shouldn't do. Steal cars and yeah. light fires. And, no, well, like, maybe about... that was just me growing up in Danny, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> maybe lighting the fires. I don't know about the stealing <laughs> cars. But, um, yeah, look, I just happened to be in the right place at the right time when this catch and cook and the whole tabs boat thing came about. Mm-hmm. I was, I'm still writing every now and then uh, editorials for Provincial Fishing Magazine, yeah, yeah. which is South East West up there fishing, at Bansdale. Yeah. I actually got a really good phone call one day from Bob Severi, the yeah, editor of the magazine, and he said, Ron, do you have any affiliations with Tackle Company? And I'm like, no, I don't, Bob. And he said, well, give this guy a call. His name is Tony Crawley from Kamikaze. Yeah, yeah. He's looking for a new face to obviously be the face of his product here in Australia. So one thing led to another. I'd done some YouTube clips, which are still online today. Yeah, so yeah. you can have a look at me seven years ago when I was a bit more plumper and <laughs> young and immature. I'm still yeah. immature, but a little bit younger. And it just grew from that, Paul. It really was just cool. a matter of wanting something that bad. It just it come about. Very um, good. Right place, right time, and yeah, just wanting it. Uh, and look, it's, it's obviously taking you somewhere where you're pretty happy doing what you're doing. Yeah. And there's going to be a lot more in the future, hopefully. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah. So, Ron, look, thanks very much for joining us on the Casting Couch, mate. No worries, Paul. Really thanks appreciate for your time. It. And I look forward to seeing more of you in the Catch and Cook. Thank you very much. Yeah.